All right. Anyway. Well, let's do this thing. Um, yeah, why not? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 158 for Thursday, the 18th of January, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos and that's Kent and the dude in the middle, uh, right where he should be, is Fitz. How y'all doing, man? Pretty good. Man, um, this is the show where, where two lifelong Friends and their geeks celebrate all things guest is what I thought you were gonna say. Uh, look, you're you're lucky I didn't say this is sure two lifelong geeks and their friends celebrate all things, which actually that that might actually be more accurate for the show. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not untrue. Hey, uh, we're still in beta. We're still writing writing the uh, the intro script. Um, how Back the f- how the fuck are you guys, man? I'm good. Man. Um, how about you, Kent? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, chaotic week at work but uh you know i got some i got some stuff done this weekend uh is this spring yet because it definitely felt like spring this week uh you were not a lot of cleaning got got some shit cleared out of my garage and taken to the dump so Mm. that was a let's go oh 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 and update i took down the christmas lights this weekend did they go to the dump too (laughs) unfortunately no (laughs) hey have you heard the song I'm, i'm sure you have but the 12 pains of christmas Ooh, um, oh. maybe it's like uh, the first pain, the first thing in Christmas that's re- such a pain to me is uh, like you know my in-laws, and then it's like putting up the lights, and then uh, charities, and like it's it's all these miserable things about the holidays. And as they go along, like the first couple of people you hear when they first start, they're just part of the song. Like the first thing in Christmas that's really such a pain to me is is stringing up the lights or whatever, you know, but by the end, those first couple people, like the, the guy that's talking about his in-laws is just fucking hammered, just shit face. Like <laughs> she's a bit, she's a witch. I hate her, you know? And, and like, they just, and then the, yeah, the, the lights guys like we blew a goddamn fuse. Somebody get a flashlight. You know? oh, <laughs> it's like, it. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, I think I have heard that. It progressively gets worse for everybody as they go along. And of course that means that the, you know, number one, two and three people are like, they're toast by the time it's over with. It's, it's hilarious. I love the song. Um, it's it's almost right as much of a favorite of mine as Grandma Girl and Over by Reindeer, but yeah, that's because Fitz, do you do do you do the whole Christmas decoration thing? You string lights everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I hate it. I just took mine down too. I mean, we just took the tree down. We always wait till after New Year's to do it. It's like a Southern thing. It's bad luck if you do it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we usually wait till the New Year. So it, it like whatever the first weekend is after the first. So what the first weekend after the streamathon is typically when when my stuff comes down. Mm. Uh, I was a week late on the lights though. We uh we just got our Christmas tree down. We our lights have been put away, but we just got the Christmas tree taken down this week um because the 15th was the last day to drop it off and have the boy scouts come pick it up for recycling. So uh, we on okay. the 14th we dropped it off where we had to drop it off. <laughs> So you go real tree. Go real we tree. we did we did. Um, it was the first real tree we've had in years, and uh, probably the last real tree we'll get for years. Yeah, but hey, at I least like you got free tree. labor from the Boy Scouts. I mean, yeah. kinda, I guess they're gonna mulch it up and give it to like schools and parks and shit. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. It. That's always good. Yeah. I I like the real tree. It gives it that Christmassy smell. You know, yeah, it gives the whole house that vibe well unless you know, i hate christmas unless you're stuck in the house like i've been like i can't mm. smell anything in this house you can have the worst rotten socks and, and just leaving there and like by day two i stopped smelling them <laughs> i'd hate to see your febreze commercial then amos <laughs> uh uh fresh scents febreze now uh now set you up as if you had been stuck in the house for months you can't smell anything Emesis balls try for breeze. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I got a, I, I, I caught up on my podcast. Well, not, not on listening to them. I'm publishing them. Um, got some storage stuff taken care of because uh, Best Buy had three ter- or eight terabyte hard drives, external hard drives for 160 bucks. So I picked up two of those, oh. tore the hard drive out of it, and threw it in my tower. So and they're, um, they're, uh, NAS like you know network attached storage quality drives so they're they'll fucking last forever and yeah eight terabyte drive for 160 bucks not bad 
So I grabbed two of those, two of those in my computer and been rearranging some of the storage. You know, you always run out of that storage on that one hard drive, so kind of been <laughs> getting all that shit fixed. And it's been it's been uh, eventful. And even knocked a few things out on the honey-do list this week. Oh, damn. That's always important. Yeah. Uh, namely, I did I, a lot uh, of that as well. Changed out light bulbs and yeah. just all the random fuckery that comes along with having a house. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's about are, it's about quarterly that you really need to go and do that. But once a quarter, <laughs> it's like fuck. All right, Saturday's just wasted. I got to do all this shit. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it, and each job yeah. is it's only five dollar five minute jobs each time. But you take like forty three trips to Lowe's in between. Yep, um, yep. You got the wrong shit <laughs> twice. <yeah. laughs> then That's you, true though. Then you end up taking it in there, and you can't remember which one's the new one, which one's the old one, because the old <laughs> one is still in such good con- good condition. You're like son of a bitch. So you know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that that was uh that was that was my week, man. That's that's how it went. Nice, nice. Fitz, what have you been up to, man? Uh man, just streaming. I would, I did a I did a twenty four hour stream. Well, it was nineteen. My controller broke in the middle of it. Uh, but it was fun. <laughs> uh, we got the new T shirts. Uh, Max Trobot did a lot of work on those, putting those together. The Fitz Ninja to Die shirt. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I streaming, man. Busy. How about y'all? Same. I did a little bit of streaming. I did. I streamed a game called Battle Block Theater. Oh yeah, I seen a couple of let's plays on it. Um, that game is so. You take your standard side scroller, except instead of like being really long, it's several le- levels deep. You know, like the, mm-hmm. the little puzzles you used to write on uh, draw for your friends to have to solve, you know, on the paper, and you got to go through little things and jump through here, and you got to hit the teleporter here and all that kind of shit. It's like that. It's a simple side scroller. You've only got a couple commands. You got one attack or whatever, and like you're you're basically this this whatever the hell he is running around. And he's been captured by cats, and he's trying to you know his ship wrecked or whatever, and it, like there's this really stupid storyline to it. But the game is fun as hell, and there's like a, a voiceover guy because you're in a theater, so there's like a guy, like a commentary on all the stuff that you're doing, and it's completely uh, sarcastic and it's hilarious, and uh, that's that's been that, that was really really fun playing that for a couple hours on uh, Twitch the other day. Yeah, I actually streamed a know? game this week as well. Uh, so during the streamathon, uh, uh, Captain Fubar was giving away a bunch of game codes, and mm. he sent me one. And I ended up with Toy Odyssey, which is basically it's a it's a side scrolling platformer type of game where you're a toy that comes to life and you have to protect your kid from like the the bad toys, basically. And uh, so so apparently, like in the story, if a toy gets lost, like if you're a little kid and you lose one of your toys, Mm -hmm. if it's gone missing for long enough, it's going to become a lost toy and basically turns evil. So this this like toy action figure has to run around like collecting shit to to build up the fort to protect the bedroom from all these evil toys and it's it's pretty crazy and I suck at it <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so yeah that's uh bad, this Twitch T slash Del Noche seventy seven if you want to see me getting mad and 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 uh, cussing at a video game you know what? I I challenge both of you because you both have PCs. You should play Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. It's it's much like the game you described, Amos. Mm. It's very sarcastic when you get pissed off. You know, it's but, a, it's a pretty good game. So, it's it's funny to watch people rage against it. So Battle Block Theater is one of those games that there's it's not it's not a complicated dynamic. There's no special moves. You're not doing like trying to trying to do like shuriken or anything else. You know, no, there's no fast button combinations and shit. So it was really fun. I had my Xbox controller plugged into the into the into my PC and just playing along. I was surprised at just how fulfilling playing a very simple game like that can be. Like, you know, I'm, I I yeah. played Division in my, you know, that's like my favorite game right now is The Division. And really I play that I'm like intense about it, you know? Like when I get a noob in my group and you can tell he's a fucking noob and he's fucking <laughs> shit up for everybody, like I'm like kick kick that dude. Like get him out of here. I ain't got time to be tutoring people. I'm trying to get my fucking epics, you know? And um, a Battle Block Theater, like, it's, supposed to, it's, it's designed to be a two-player game to where you can play with each other or against each other. Like, you can be competitive or whatever. And just sitting there playing it by myself was just a shit ton of fun. And it was so relaxing. I really enjoyed it. Now I need to get our, yeah. our Twitch affiliation set up the right way so that people can buy Battle Block Theater from us and we can earn a dollar off the deal. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Uh, how you can sell games. I was like, man, I want to sell games. Yeah. Sounds fun. Um, I, I picked up, I think, eight or ten games during the winter sale. And uh, Captain Fubar said he's going to send me one, but I, I can't remember where he sent that to me. So I haven't gotten back to him because I can't, like, I can't remember which of the 53 social platforms he sent that to me on. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I'm, I'm going to go through and I'm going to play all these games and you can check all those out right here on the uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery channel. Cause I'll, uh, you know, might as well combine the efforts and make it, make it a, one, a single thing for me. Kent, on the other hand, he can't remember the login. So he's just going to stay playing on his own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've I've got it. I can get in there. <laughs> um, also, this week, uh, slobs, 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 like uh, like Talk like me and me Fitz. Like, like, what what slobs are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I think it's funny how how Fitz got defensive about being called a slob, and you were like, yeah, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> yeah, what about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, um, I slobs. shaved my head and everything. <laughs> Uh, Slobs is Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs has come out with their own OBS uh, platform. Of course, uh, OBS is open source, and Streamlabs has made this open source as well. It works pretty good. It's got all the Streamlabs plugins and things like that that you'd normally like have to search HTML or whatever for in OBS. It's got all those built in. It's got some extra features that OBS doesn't have. Like when you go to place your stuff, it's got automatic labeling of how many pixels wide everything is and where it's placed, all that kind of stuff. It was super simple. To, to, it actually imported all of the scenes over directly from OBS. And so far, other than every time I go to stream, it crashes the first time I restart it, hit the stream, and it just goes. I fucking love it. It's, it's awesome. It's exactly why I like open source stuff because somebody has a really good product that everybody's using, and then somebody else comes along and says, you know what, I'm going to produce a quality custom version of this for this purpose in this case twitch streaming and or youtube streaming and make it work really well and very simple to use and it's beautiful it's i would actually pay for this software as it is right now and it's still in beta and it's open source so it's free right on yeah I, dude you showed me a little bit of that in the pre-show and i am really looking forward to playing with that it is um like super awesome it's got all the stuff man like everything that you need is there it looks super easy to figure out if you already know uh, what you're doing with OBS. Like this, this makes it even easier. Yeah, uh, um, you know, all the time to, that I look to, to find a way to to uh, put chat room on screen without some fucked up, wicked, nasty background behind it and stuff like that. Fucking built in. Like it's just yeah, it's so yeah. stupid, so easy. Um, so yeah, that that's a that was my geeky thing of the week. And um, but you have to pay for stream labs OBS though, don't you? No, you have to pay the five ninety nine. No, you don't. Nope. No, it's completely nope. free. In fact, uh, I found out about it because I, I got an email from Streamlabs that said, hey, go check it out. And I clicked on the link, and there it was. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll try it. But I'll get a couple of days before the Ritual Misery podcast comes on. I'll, I'll go ahead and try it and maybe stream a little bit with it. With it. Works good. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, I talked about uh, my Christmas present, which was the Ancestry DNA kit. Right. Did that come um, back as Martian I, yet? No, yeah, I have not received the uh, results from that yet, but I did get an email saying that they're almost done with it and I should receive it like here, like very soon, probably before next week's show. So you I you probably get an that. email saying they're almost done with it when they started it. Right. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I got an email saying <laughs> that, how... that we received it and we started on it. And then now they said, like, I guess they've already run the test, but now they're compiling the data or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully next week I'll be able to report on the results of that. But in the meantime, like that Martian. reignited my ancestry or my um, uh, genealogy bug, man. Mm. Like I've been all up in Ancestry.com shit for like the last two weeks, man. Like I've spent more hours this week doing uh, genealogy research and like going through my old records. Because I, man, I don't know if many people know this about me, but I used to be passionate about genealogy. I've right. got records for days. And um, I, I pretty much lost my database uh, with all of my stuff compiled. Uh, so I'm I'm basically re remaking all of my uh, all of my stuff on Ancestry.com's interface, and uh, which which man. kills you because the interface hasn't changed very much. But now they they store your information online, so you, even if you for yeah. lose it all now, you can just log back in, and there it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's what, it's what makes you right. have that curiosity for your genealogy uh you know 
that's a really good question. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just fascinated with like where I came from and not just like, a, you know, listing names and stuff like that, but actually learning about the people. Mm. So like, for example, my, uh, what is he like five great, maybe six great, uh, grandfather, uh, in direct paternal line. He immigrated to the United States from Belgium and he was a glassmaker in Belgium and he brought that with him to Allegheny city, which is now Pittsburgh, hmm. uh, back in the 1800s. And he opened up a glass factory there and just being able to read articles about that and read about my ancestor. It's like, like, wow, I don't know. It's just, it's so fascinating to me. It's like the and coolest the whole, the, ever. Yeah. And like the, the whole, the whole butterfly effect thing just boggles my mind of like, I'll find, I'll find just two random people in my, in my family tree. And I'll be like, you know what? If that dude just didn't feel like fucking that day, <laughs> my entire history is gone. You know what I mean? I would not exist. That broke me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't feel that. Well, what are you hoping that it says besides what you already know? Curious. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Like I, I, I think that's I the biggest thing is confirming. From, is, what's that? I, think, I think the biggest thing is confirming that the other, the, the other search results you've used are accurate. Right. But I know that it's going to fill in a lot of missing information as well, because like I've traced pretty far back with my, like I said, my direct paternal line. So dad's dad's dad, right. et cetera. And mm -hmm. like with my mom's dad's dad's dad, like I, I get that to England. And then I have a like great, great, great grandmother or something like that from Germany. So I know those, but you know, it's all Western Europe, but I'm super interested to find out what else is in there like where you know where i mean i might have i might have some jew for all i know i might have some middle eastern blood <laughs> through these veins. i might have some native american for all i know like i i really have no idea and i'm just i'm so curious so eager to get these results it's it's gonna be great no matter what it tells me it's gonna be awesome i still think it's interesting that the word jew describes the people and describes the people it's not. It's not like it's funny a, it's that it's a noun said, and an adjective. I have a Jew in me. It's just the way he was like excited about it. Like I could have Jew, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can have anything. I can have Japanese for all I know. I, I mean, I it could be kind of it, But maybe, like you know, I could. Who knows? Who knows? It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. It's cool. The kid, you know, I wanted to do it too, but I don't know. I just. Yeah, and I was the same way, too, and I probably never would have done it for myself had someone not gifted it to me. And uh, th thank you, Sassy Inn. Uh, yeah. She knows you. She might. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, I love yeah, yeah. What is your What does your live-in girlfriend have to know about your genes? <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, there's, there's probably some ulterior motive there. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to what? gene splice a baby or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got what your I ass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, I love Sassian, and I um, there's another group of people that I love quite a bit. Doubt and it. And that would be our patrons. Okay, maybe. Over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you want to be one of those, head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Join the club of fuckos that we have going on over there. Show us that you give a fuck about our show. Give us a buck. Uh man, we're we're putting new stuff in there soon. Some some really cool post shows. You're gonna get the full Tay Allen post show. Well, the majority of the Tay Allen post show. <laughs> <laughs> show itself. Uh, pretty good stuff. Um, she's hilarious. She's a a great guest. She's awesome every time. You guys are gonna love the post show. Um, yeah, man, become become a patron. See what all that's about. Uh, we're about to revamp the the Patreon. Tears. Uh, it's gonna have Discord privileges and all kinds of cool stuff in there. Uh, so get over there and check that out. patreoncom slash misery You just you just promised a whole bunch of people some Discord privileges, not knowing that or knowing that they don't know that we have a Discord. <laughs> what there's a Discord? Hey, oh, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> Fitz is like Discord again. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not like I'm in 15 of them already. Yeah, you know? Discord is last year's Slack. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, you I have like a Slack. Discord, uh, yeah, I like the fuck I mean, out you mean Discord. You know, of course. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, cruise on by uh, uh, that place and and do that thing. And um, 
Uh, Mbeam says, no love for the Twitch subbies. And yes, there is. Uh, the Twitch subs and the Patreon will be... They're, they'll be matched up so that whichever way that you you choose to to uh, uh, participate, you will be rewarded equally. Yeah, absolutely. If if you, in fact, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber and you didn't realize, you have Twitch Prime as well. Mm. And if you haven't oh. used your free sub, you can head over, head on over to twitch.tv slash ritual misery, hit the subscribe button, and then choose the free Twitch subscription and you give us two dollars and 49 cents of jeff bezos's money yep free to you yeah it doesn't cost you shit besides some clicky clickies and having to look at our face on the page <laughs> yeah i mean there is that i mean it's, that's the hardest part it's it no <laughs> clearly it is it yeah no we understand um hey is it uh it's about time for one of these you've got 60 seconds get your mind right it's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. Fitz, I think you know uh, how this goes. This is the part of the show where we give you a topic, and then you have all the time in the world to rant about it. Actually, that's not true. You have 60 seconds to go through the whole thing. So you just rant and rave, and then we will cut you off with the record scratch, and then we will give you your next topic. You wait, ready? Kent, what, what sound was that? No. 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 Is that not coming it's through? Scary. No, it's coming through. Yeah, it came okay. through. Just, <laughs> all right, Fitz. Here we go. <sighs> Fuckos, am I right? Oh, man, I love all my fuckos, man. Uh, DKG, Frog Pants, the Diamond Club, you all fuckos me. Just, you know. <laughs> Logan Paul, am I right? Uh, I don't want to talk about his dumbass because he'll do something stupid in another fucking month or so, but, you know, <laughs> walked in the woods. <laughs> Truck tires, am I right? Oh, yeah, they go flying off your fucking truck if the, someone tightens the lug nuts too tight. <clears throat> but I, it probably made it to South by Southwest. Being on time for podcasts, am I right? Oh, man, I can never do that shit. I'm always late to game night. Uh, hashtag game night. Uh, and uh, I think I was late for this, too. I messaged, like, at 9.59. I was like, what's up? Are we doing it? <laughs> And finally, the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? I love you, fuckos. I really do. And I'm I'm glad y'all on Twitch. I'm glad you're affiliated. I'm glad. I'm just glad for everything, man. Glad you let me be on this show before I fuck it up. <laughs> All right, awesome. That was hot takes with Fitz. Thanks, buddy. We need to get with. Fitz affiliated. Like I don't. I don't like. How can? Yeah. Uh, that's we just, need to work on. That. It just boggles me. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right at the end of our show, we oh. will. Uh, we will. Tweet the affiliate. hell out of that. We will pimp the hell out of um, Fitz. Fitz is Twitch. Fitz. Fitz Twitch. Twitch. Fitz. Yeah, it's uh, Twitch.tv slash Fitzshiv29. It's. I'm affiliated. I just. Oh, you are. You know. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Oh, you are affiliated now. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I thought you were, and then I thought you weren't, and then now it's confirmed Maybe, that you are. Uh, don't tell so. me uh, Twitch is doing like YouTube and yanking that shit. Uh no. Yeah. YouTube is like, I don't even want to get started, man. Like, I feel bad for smaller creators. That with their partnership now, you have to have a thousand followers and or a thousand subscribers. It's a thousand subs. Four hundred hours of watch time. Four hundred four hundred hours of watch time in the last thirty days. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. That's a lot. I would hate to be the person writing the algorithm for that because you know it's automated. You know, like nobody's going through there and doing that shit manually. So I would just not like to be the person that like has to hit the submit button, like save on that algorithm getting put in. You know, like oh man, I'm a dick. Save. Oh, uh, whatever. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, people ask me about the algorithm all the time. Best uh, example of the algorithm, watch Matt Pat's uh, Logan Paul loophole video, and he it explains the algorithm perfectly. Because mm. CNN embed, or CNN, Fox News, you know, Wall Street Journal, if, you're, if it gets embedded with that tag, it automatically thinks that, this is a great video. It's trending. Even if it's this is what happened with Logan Paul. That's why that video blew up so much because it was covered by the news so quick. You know, All right. I said, I don't want to give him a platform. Krug is now hosting us. So thank you very much for Krug. Um, oh, yeah. yeah and, and that's another person. If you don't know who Matt Pat is, you need to like learn how to live a little bit because that dude is hilarious. Yeah. <clears throat> he does a, a game theory and 
he does other things too, but just game theory is worth watching. Just how he tears, yeah, tears into, is a good yeah, how he tears into uh, Mario and Zelda and, and the cross relationships and and alternate theories on games and stuff like that. It's 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 a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, right on. Hey, uh, Fitz, you mentioned T-shirts earlier. Can you tell us about the the T-shirt, where that came from, how that came about, what it's what it is, how to get it, all that stuff? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd actually have to look for the link unless somebody else has the link and can post it. But uh, my wife came up with the design, and it was just I was going to go to local publishers and all that, and it just it was so expensive. But Teespring actually, you know, I don't make shit off the shirts. They're just I think it's cool that fuckos want to wear them, you know, and it's. Uh, but Teespring actually is a good platform if you want to do anything, shirts, socks, hats, um, man. And, uh, I, since I don't have a PC, I couldn't make it, but my wife designed the shirt and, uh, Max Trollbot, if you don't know Max Trollbot, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he designed it, he put the shirt together and he's been helping me promote it, you know, and everything. And. You know, it's just great that, you know, we have fuckos like that that support support us and help us advance in our careers, you know? I, um, I've got some experience using Spreadshirt and Teespring and a few others, and i got to tell you, all of them, all those sites that do that, all the, the, the print-on-demand services or embroider-on-demand or whatever, whichever, you know, whatever, whatever, um, all of them could use some user interface uh, uh, tutorship because... <laughs> none of them are just straight up and simple it's all like like for spreadshirt for example you can't just go in there and be like okay i want to design a shirt you have to log in, not only log into your account which is not in the best of places but once you're in your account it just gives you a storefront and then you have to go in there and be like no i want to look at my store oh now that i'm in my store i want to look at my designs now that i'm in my designs i want to yep. it's like why am I clicking 43 times to paste a fucking gif on here and make a t-shirt? Like, it's just ridiculous. All And, and all of them are the same. Yeah. Some of them, at least Spreadshirt has a built-in marketplace, whereas Teespring, you can't really just put a Teespring link on your shit. It's got, it's, it's got special formatting and everything else to it, and it's, okay, there's another barrier to entry. This It's just stupid. All of them could, could just be more simple. Yeah, and that's the thing. They're wonderful platforms. Like they're they're great. They provide a wonderful service for not a lot of money. It's it's great. Come on, design team. Yeah. Make it easy. Like, uh. And the price is like if you're just selling one shirt at a time, you can't make a uh you cannot make a profit on it. Like don't don't try because the shirt's gonna cost you twenty bucks to start with. And nobody's gonna buy yeah, a yeah. twenty eight, thirty dollar shirt for, you know, El Putt's podcast. So like <laughs> Even when we had it, we had a one dollar markup on everything we have in our store, and that's just one dollar. It's like a, it's like a one time donation for us, you know. That's that's all it was, and gosh, man, even that. And that was yeah. mostly yeah. that was mostly because I made the designs and put them on the site, and then I didn't want someone else selling those designs without at least kicking back a little bit. So I put a one dollar charge on the design. Well, that makes a one dollar charge on everything that that design, including stuff I want to sell. It, it, <laughs> it was like fucking stupid. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so Fitz, um, I clicked on the link that Cruz was so nice to put in the uh, in the Twitch chat, and uh, it brings up your shirt, which we're going to include the link in the show notes as well for the audio listeners. Uh, cool. So the design says Fitz needs you to die. Can you explain the origin of that phrase? I don't know, man. I you know is <laughs> we play trivia and murder party, and when just when you're in the audience, you get to pick who dies. You know, or who you want to die, and it just one day I was like, "Hey, bad weave, I uh, I need you to die," and just from there, it's like it follows me around, you know. And I have to explain <laughs> to people, "No, I don't really want you to die, unless we're playing trivia murder yeah, party." Yeah. Then I, I, then I kind of need you. It's not a want. It's a. It's a need. It's a need. It's a need. <laughs> yeah, Fist doesn't want you to die. He needs you to die. <laughs> Yeah, I just I don't know. Oh man, that'll be good stuff. That'll be on my tombstone. I did what I needed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did what I needed me to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, Del Noche seventy seven gave us a sub. So very thank you to uh, oh. Del Noche seventy seven. Oh hey, that fucko. Yeah, that, that was a long time ago. He's all right. We let him stay, you know. <laughs> <gasps> well, um, cool. yeah, we uh we hmm, go, uh, uh, talk for a minute. I got to figure something out. Oh, well, you know, there's uh, yeah, things so, and stuff. So what, and what's some other things you got going on, Fitz? You got the T-shirts. You've got um, you've got a medium, 
uh, site. I, tell us, yeah, tell us uh, what you do on media right. and what kind of what kind of things oh, you got going I, on over there. Well, right now I'm working on a a book um, about my daughter. You know, some of you know the story. Uh, or you read the article. So, but I figure I can use my platform to help somebody. You know, because uh, I'm not. I'm, maybe not a lot of people went through what I went through, but imagine some people have, and maybe it'll help them be humbler about the situation or, or just understand there's other people out there like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how much are you comfortable saying on this platform, like one or two sentences? So people kind of understand uh, it. I mean, I don't really care. You know, it's out there. Um, my daughter was murdered by my ex fiance. She had a postpartum depression. And, and that's the problem is postpartum depression doesn't get, a lot of the headlines or anything it needs to help fix the situation. You know, uh, yeah. we just label whoever as a monster and we're done with them. We throw them away and lock the key. Uh, you know, just there's, I've, it's something that I went through and, you know, thank God I'm not crazy or whatever deity or you, whoever you should like or pray to. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I want people to know there's, somebody you can reach out to or you know i'm writing it because i want them to be able to reference and see that you know i live through it and i'm i'm crazy as fuck but i'm i'm okay i can yeah. blend in with yeah. society you know yeah yeah um yeah the powerful story um uh, me is uh, long along with a lot of other people i'm sure read your medium article about the situation and it it was uh it was pretty powerful it, it really um, it, it really touched me and it was, um, I understand that it was, uh, obviously a difficult time is probably a very difficult article to write as well. And, um, I encourage everyone to check out, uh, uh Fitz's medium page, which is what, what's the link to your medium? I just search Robert Medley on medium. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was, I was, yeah. I was smart and used my real name as a writer's name. No one will figure it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, un unfortunate situation, but, um, a, um, very, uh, inspiring story, uh, for, for you to, you know, put that out there and offer the support. And, um, I, I do look forward to what you have brewing in the future for that. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, so that's, you know, that's your writing. Uh, do you got anything else going on? Any other, um, platforms? You got the Twitch, you got the well, medium. We do. We do game night every Friday. Uh, you know, I suggest everybody come out with W Scottis one, uh, check him out. He's a great fucko. Uh, we do that every Friday. Uh, you know, everybody comes in. We just have a good time, play Jackbox, be stupid, you know? Uh, other than that, I'm streaming Assassin's Creed, doing like trying to go through all the Ezio story. And, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, that's been kind of my uh, just, whenever I, I have idle me. time, whenever I've got just like, oh man, I I've got like ten minutes here, fifteen minutes there. Uh, over the last week, I've I've popped into your Twitch channel and watched a lot of, a lot of assassinations happen <laughs> at the hands of yeah, yeah, it's been uh, a lot of that. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, so I had a discovery this beer, week. Beer two, actually. Real big, Kent. What's that? Alaskan oh, beer number light. two. Yeah. So. This is a okay. wit style ale brewed with spices. It's another okay. Alaskan yeah. brewery. Right on. So it's a it's basically the Belgian white style, which is it's a wheat style beer. Uh, it's got a little bit of spiciness in it. Usually you get some um, uh, like some orange, like citrus notes in it. Mm. Um, good stuff. I didn't announce to people what my beer was in the pre-show. It's a Lagunitas Born Yesterday Pale Ale. It's a it's pretty hoppy, but it's it's got like a, a little bit of a I don't know fruity note to it. It's okay. Um, I'm an IPA guy, so I like a lot of hops. Uh, so I do appreciate that part of it. Uh, it's not as dank as as the ones I tend to drink, but it's pretty good. I I give it a thumbs up for sure. Um, this is tasty. Pitts, are you a beer guy? I uh, are you a beer? Not guy? as much as you fuckos are, but I drink Coors Light. I mean, that's about it. So, but do you I'm drink, like, do you yeah, drink beer liquor. though? Yeah, I drink. Yeah, beer. <laughs> all right. So you drink Coors Light, but do you drink beer? <laughs> We're asking about yeah. about beer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, no. I mean, whatever, whatever form of canned um, 
<laughs> piss water you want to drink? That's all up to you, man. Uh, yeah, Sylvia no. WW just sent us a follow, and we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, much appreciated. No, but I so I made a discovery this week. Uh, whenever we uh, the family we get together and uh, like to like to watch movies together. Uh, a lot of times we watch during dinner and things like that. And sometimes we're we're watching a TV series and we'll just watch the next episode of whatever it is we're watching. Um, this week we decided to watch Willy Wonka, like the original 1971 movie, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And something struck me that I never noticed before in my many watchings of this movie. One of the characters' names is Mike TV. Mm. You didn't know that, fucker? We pick on Mike TV about that shit all the time. Yeah, I have never, I don't know. Somehow this has escaped my notice. And I was like, wait a minute. What the fuck did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> and then that scene where they where they all have to sign the contract that's on the wall. It's got the tiny writing and all that sort of stuff. The, the kid went up there and he no shit signed it. Mike, capital T, capital V. I was like, oh my God. Um, yeah, so, if it, you know, I don't know. May, maybe a lot of you out there are like me and it just went right over your fucking head until I just told you. Yeah, and Beam in the chat says, OMG, Kent, fail. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm just now catching up to the rest of the world, but that that was like <laughs> my my holy shit moment of the week. Well, if you actually, if you ask Mike, uh, his his name come doesn't come from that at all. It's just people just started calling him Mike TV, and even though he hated the moniker, he just accepted it one day. Yeah, yeah, might as well. If you can't beat him, join him, I guess. Right. That's I mean, that's how Amos came around. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like exactly. literally, it just didn't happen to be tied in with the fucking Willy Wonka character. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, one, one, another one of our friends does a podcast called What Is It About the Weather? Oh, hell yeah, man. Mark Jelinek, he was a previous guest on RMP. And really Undaunted. great. Yeah. Yeah. And Undaunted. yeah, absolutely. Uh, really great guy. Uh, his podcast is is really good. It, you, know, you might think, why the fuck would I listen to a podcast about weather? Well, the crazy thing is, his weather podcast is pretty much about everything except weather. Uh, right. Well, not except. I mean, well, it's, it's everything. It's how the weather relates to everything to non-weather. So, yeah, so yeah. it's it's exactly. centered it on weather, but it's like there's here's a link between weather and this over here, and he's going to explain how that gets to there. You know, it's yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I I highly highly recommend that people check this out. It is uh, actually if you just go to what it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is it about, about the, the weather. weather.com. He's got the links to all of his stuff in there. It's man, such a good show. But the reason we're talking about it this week is that this week's episode, the the newest one, he he releases his shows on Friday. So the one that dropped almost a week ago now, he talks about weather that you don't expect to get. Like I, I think he titled it "Why Did I Get That Weather?" Mm. and if you guys remember when he was on our show, I mentioned to him that when I lived in Okinawa, an island, a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific, we had a tornado tear up my neighborhood. And that's something that you don't think about happening on an island. You you think about that on the, you know in the plains, you know, yep. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Um, yeah, so he did a whole show about you know weather that seems uh, Extremely not unlikely. common or not. Yeah, unlikely for the area that you live in. And he reached out to me a few weeks ago to ask me more details about the the tornado that I experienced. And he did a whole show uh, about that type of weather. And so probably about, uh, I don't know, a third of it is cool. about the tornado in Okinawa. So, so that damn yeah. tornado, the only reason I remember that tornado is because, like I said on Twitter earlier this week, it was very specific to one small neighborhood – that Kent happened to live in. Um, it tore a bunch of trees apart, spun some cars, flipped a couple of this, a couple of that. But one thing that it did is it took a car, parked in between two other cars, and literally flipped it upside down without hurting either of the cars parked next to it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, oh, cool. like it, it, And that, to me, that always blew my mind. It looked like someone went out there and took the car, like, like backed it out, flipped it over on a crane or something like that, and then just kind of laid it down. It, the car didn't even look yep. damaged. It, it was just... Upside down. And neither yeah, of the cars then, parked next to it got hurt at all. 
Yeah, and then like the same thing, like a block away from that, there was a, a stop sign ripped completely out of the ground, like the concrete yeah. anchor <laughs> and all, completely ripped out of the ground, car sitting next to it, not touched. Yeah. Tree it, standing next to it, not touched. It, it was, it's still got it was, leaves on it. It was the weirdest fucking tornado. It, like, it was very specific. It was like, I'll take, yeah. take a little bit of that and a little bit of that, and I'll take some of this and one of those. Okay, thank you. Like, yep, I'll was, just leave the rest, though. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> what, was his, uh, what was his analysis? Was it because of hot air and cold air currents coming off of the ocean? Or uh, was it just... um, that's the thing about get... Mark's podcast is he doesn't get into like the science of the weather. He, j- he goes into more of the more of the the experience of it and it's actually not uncommon for, for okinawa to get tornadoes it's yeah it's fairly that's, what, that's fairly, kind of what we discovered yeah. on it. like it was it's a hell of a lot more common than like we they, thought. Get, they and, get several a year most most of them are water spouts just off the coast but they get several each year this one just happened to be right in the middle of the island yeah yeah exactly and i lived there for four years and that was the only tornado i'd ever heard of yeah I, <laughs> well i lived here for a not well th- for three of those years plus one year after and it's the only tornado yeah. I ever heard of while I was there. Yeah, so. craziness. <clears throat> well, I had that tree fall on my house last year, and we were supposed to evacuate to the Walmart, and the roof of the Walmart got torn off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go figure. So, hey, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but uh, I have, I feel it's, it's we have to mention that Twit is suing Twitter. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, alleging be- breach of contract and trademark infringement. They talked about this uh, on the pre-show of Night Attack this week. And essentially, Leo Laporte is trying to say that now that Twitter is getting into the video business, that they are violating oral contracts that they had with Twit about the Twit part of Twitter. Man, okay. So Twit is alleging, so Leo and Twit LLC are alleging that Twitter, by including audio and video as part of the Twitter platform, he's alleging that they are damaging the brand of Twit. Yes. Um, and I, I know you I don't, don't know. you don't want to say it. So I'll say it. The only thing damaging the brand of Twit is Leo Laporte. Well, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. If you didn't say it, I would have said it. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I see two things. Okay, number one, this lawsuit is making news, not like headline news, like you know, CNN's not reporting this, uh, but like the the tech the tech channels are 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 reporting this. Um, he's bringing attention to Twit through this lawsuit, so that's a good thing mm-hmm. for them, right? And he is also so he's suing for damages, and well, actually, he's suing to get them to stop doing video which right. basically he's trying to like enforce a cease and desist type of thing which twitter is basically going to tell leo to eat shit mm-hmm. like there's no fucking way twit is going to win this so i think leo is probably hoping for a payoff like here take a million dollars and shut the fuck up i mean i wouldn't doubt it i'm not there's, saying that this is completely frivolous because th- there is some like Krug said in the uh, in the chat, there there is some conversations that they had when Twitter came out that Twit was there and Twitter and Twit can't can't coexist in the same space. So as long as they maintain sure. their separate spaces, it's fine. They are now kind of converging in the same space, but it's sure. But the, it's not the same thing. I mean, I understand. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing video. It's it's cool. But I mean, the type of video that Twitter is doing is not the type of video that Twit is doing. There's not going to be right. any confusion. Yet, Nobody's going to not go to Twit because Twitter is right. now showing like, oh, I can share a video on Twitter or when they were streaming Thursday Night Football. Like that's not Twit's space. Right. Well, I mean, again, the only thing stopping people from going to Twit is Leo Laporte. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't I'm not, I'm not trying to personally attack anybody, but but at the same time, like this. I understand that there's a basis here, like, but man, Leo, you're not gonna win, know. bro. Like, yeah. I, I think I, as we long as he said doesn't that about the lady with McDonald's and the damn coffee cup lid. You oh, know, so there's so much more to that than we ever learned about at the time. Um, yeah. I think as long as as long as this lawsuit doesn't cost Twit any money, it's a win for Leo. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. So, he's already won. Like, people are like, what the fuck is Twit? Right. <laughs> and then they're going and to Twit. As and far as Twitch, say, I'm sure. Twitch, Twitch has Bezos money. Twitter, Twit is not going to come at Twitch for anything ever because they they have Bezos money and Twitter is still on its 10th year of non-profitability. So, well, so do you, do you think it was a ploy for more exposure on well, Twitch half? That's, I, that's what I think. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. E- either way, that's that's how it works out for Twit. So it's still a, a net gain for Twit, uh, regardless. As yeah. long as long as Twitch does or uh, Twitter doesn't come back and and get awarded um, legal fees or some shit like that, it, this is a win for Twit. Yeah, M Beam in the chat says Twitch is more of a threat to Twit than Twitter. Uh, that's a tongue twister, but uh, that's yeah, that that's probably true. But again, Twitch uh, has Bezos money. Twi- Twit's not going to come at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's you know that's whenever I typed T W I into my browser, it's like, uh, which one are you trying to go to? And it's always the one that I didn't mean to go to. If I yeah. just hit enter real quick. Well, it's because you you're, you you mean to go to the one that you haven't been to yet. So <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> your browser is going to the most recent one. Well, that's not the one you want to go to. That's the one you just left. God damn it. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to read a statement here and I want you to tell me which celebrity it came from. Okay. Okay. All right. Go. As Bill a, Laporte. Oh shit. Okay. Sorry. sorry. As a person, <laughs> as a person who was born in an era before women were people, the allegations against me are troubling. I imagine that any woman would have been thrilled to see my tiny penis poking out from below my pasty, middle-aged paunch like a head of generic albino turtle moments before death. And of course, now I realize my behavior was wrong. In conclusion, I'm not saying the victim is a liar. I'm just saying she's not telling the truth about the thing that happened because maybe it didn't even happen. Louis C.K. I don't know. Uh, Steve Bannon. (laughs) <laughs> Leo Laporte doubling down. <laughs> oh dear God! Um, um, this came from the Apology Generator, who has uh, it's it's a site that has taken the apologies of all these male celebrities and combined them into an algorithm to where you can go and generate your own celebrity apology. Hell yeah! Oh, I've so this oh, that. so this is just like an algorithm. Yeah. Thing. And they get repetitive if you start clicking through them, but it randomly generates it each time, and it's 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 actually pretty fun. I mean, Hold silver down. lining and all, you know. But uh, yeah, I was like, who would have the balls to come out in public and say some shit like it, that? It's a combination. Like this one is: as a father of daughters, I feel tremendously guilty now. The things that I did have been made public. I imagine that any woman would have been thrilled to see a tiny penis pe- peeking out from below my pasty middle-aged punch like the head of a ge- geriatric albino turtle moments from death. And, of course, now I realize my behavior was wrong. In conclusion, I will do my best to learn from this situation without reading anything or listening to anyone's perspective other than my own. Wow. I want to yeah. know where they coined the phrase geriat- geriatric <laughs> albino turtle. That's what I want to know. Like, geriatric albino turtle penis? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who, uh, apology, why is that not in the apology it, generator.com? Yeah. If you guys want to try it at home. It's pretty fabulous. It it, it kind of like I said, silver lining on a bad situation, but at least there's something I can laugh about in this because all of them, no matter what you do, they're all fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know, we gotta you know, humor is like healing for the soul, I guess, or something like that. Laughter is the best medicine, all that good stuff. So um Cool. Yeah, that was inevitable, I think, for something like that to come out. <laughs> it's it's ingenious. I wish I would have thought of it, really. Uh, I'm trying to... There we go. I'm trying to add a title to my thing. Um, yeah, so th- I, I figured I had to share that with you guys. I'm going to share a couple more things with you real quick uh, before we get out of here. Do we have a... We don't have a TED... Uh, do we have a TED Talk this week? We do not. Okay, good. No, we do not. Um, do not. <laughs> good, because I'm about to run us over time. Um <laughs> oh dear god so um should we break out the soapbox yeah so some some hot takes that i found on the internet uh just this evening actually this is just the the four consecutive threads uh in my facebook feed this is why i don't go to facebook so if you want to know why i'm never on facebook this is why uh the first one president's first physical doctor no heart cognitive or comma cognitive issues the way this is written it's like the doctor is saying that the president has no heart 
and has cognitive issues. I okay, love I mean, this headline the, the just be huh? The, his doctor wouldn't be the only one saying that. Well, that's this is that's just it. This is one of those things where you take you take factual stuff in, in a, in a, in a, like if this was written on the same line, even no heart slash cognitive issues. Got it. But the way that it's separated makes it feel more like two separate thoughts. And I just I think it's beautiful headlining. Mm. We should all at the real Donald Trump right now with this. There you go. If you're watching the video version, you can see it. Um, and, of course, there will be links in the show notes. Uh, the next one, <sighs> some of these are doozies. The next one uh, is one of those little uh, meme, meme signs and says, Fun fact, kids voting in the next presidential election are the same ones eating Tide Pods. <laughs> okay, the Tide Pod <laughs> meme, that, that's a good fucking one for the Tide Pod meme. All right. Uh, so the I so the Tide Pod possible. thing. Let, let me let me just <laughs> ask about the Tide Pod thing okay, real look quick. Tasty. They look tasty. Have you not looked at them? Okay, sure, sure, sure. But who's actually eating these fucking things? Uh, it's just a couple of kids on YouTube. People, they're like people on YouTube uh, looking for views, man. The Tide yeah. Pod challenge. The Tide Pod. Like, is this really a rampant problem, or is this just like it's yeah, enough? It's enough that, that Tide has released a statement saying, "Don't eat our stuff." It really well, yeah, is. but I mean, I every company is gonna start... you know, put a warning on their shit if somebody just suggests that ooh maybe maybe somebody will jump off of a building and stab themselves in the eye with a screwdriver. Now all of our screwdrivers have to say don't jump off a building and stab yourself in the eye. I mean that's just kind of well no I'm not how... talking about the packaging says don't eat it. Uh, packaging's always said don't eat it. Like they <laughs> released another statement because this is like something that's trying to catch on. So much so that YouTube has come out and said, if we see this, if someone complains about, about a, a Tide Pod video, we will take it down and strike a, a mark, one of the three marks against that account. Yeah. Right. So, but, I, but I mean, how rampant is this really? Like, is this like, oh, do we no, have it's documentation? Like, uh, it's so rampant that I stopped at a Dollar General to find Tide Pods to take a selfie with, and there was no Tide Pods, so I took a selfie with bleach. <laughs> yeah. They have to I sell these behind the, the pharmacy counter now, just like <laughs> certain cough syrups and. Seriously, man, like this is this is just the era of stupidity. But yes, the 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 kids voting in the next presidential election are the ones on YouTube right now eating Tide Pods. All three of them. <laughs> there's there's actually uh, uh, you, you, because you haven't that. heard about it, you have a bias that it's not a big thing. But I've heard about it from three different sources, so my bias says it's much bigger than you think it is. Um, yeah. Okay, so ne next next one, next one. Uh, this is a kid crying, and it says the left is trying to silence freedom of speech, and that's crossed out, and it says in capital letters, "I can no longer be an openly racist, homophobic, transphobic, misogynist bigot in public, in school, or in the work site anymore." But I feel the need to blame my own inability to get over my prejudices on a political opponents instead of being a responsible person and coming to terms that I need to change my bad behavior and beliefs toward other people. Hashtag everyday problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of words. And it's honestly looking at this, it's a lot of misspelled words as well. Um, oh, I, yeah, it was kind of like difficult that? to read that one. No, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I found it very easy to read because this is exactly what I say or exactly what I think of every time I see that the left is trying to silence my freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I, I mean, I see yeah, the same thing when I when I when I see that the the statement saying the right is trying to uh, uh, make it a, a police state with all their guns, and I'm like, no. But I, yeah. I see your point, though. <laughs> They're trying to take our guns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, one side's trying to take our guns, the other side's trying to trying to take our babies. I, I don't I don't know. I, I can't I can't equal it out because yeah, have guns yeah. and babies in the same room. That's just common knowledge. <laughs> I, I think the lesson learned is that, that all political parties are, are garbage and yes. poisonous to our way of life. And cut. And that thing that you just said, yes. Um this one is a is a tweet. It says it's from at inter internet hippo. And it says, quote, young people are soft today. In the 1940s, we were fighting Nazis, end quote. And then it says underneath that in brackets, young people beat up some Nazis in 2017. And then it goes on for another quote, now hold on. <laughs> 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 yeah, this, this uh, just speaks to the whole double standard. Like, you know, you... you <sighs> well, I, I'm for one, like, I'm tired of the whole, like, you're against me, so you must be Hitler speech, you know, yeah. like... 
I'm tired yeah. of that whole like you got to be a Nazi if you don't stand with me shit. But I, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a true mean. Everybody using that like terms like Nazi and stuff like that. I think um, I mean once in a while it applies, but I think for the most part it's like it's taking away the power of those words. Like when we say Nazi, like that guy was a Nazi, it should hold some kind of power and like either strike fear or disgust or you know, something in everyone's hearts, but we use it so rampantly today that now it's like a punchline. Well, yeah, and, it's when uh, you run out of ideas. Uh, 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 you're, you're, you're a Nazi. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, and, it's, and especially like when argument. people attach the word Nazi on the, on the end of something else. Like, uh, uh, I remember when uh, breastfeeding advocates were referred to as boob Nazis. You know, like, uh, yeah, that like, has I literally had, zero had to do with Nazism. Advocate. But, uh, <laughs> I, this is my thing. If we're going to sit there and associate everything with Nazis and therefore deflate the importance of the word Nazi, don't we have some other words we should be deflating first? Well, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, Irritates but me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on the whole idea of uh, taking away power from words. Um, how about we just use the powerful words appropriately or not use those words like butthead i don't know butthead is a conundrum uh butthead well, is actually yeah. the name of one of my favorite cartoon characters so <laughs> yeah. uh, power uh, damn it, uh, uh, yeah damn it beavis <clears throat> all right um so we got uh we got some other things to talk tell people about before we get out of here tonight kent won't you uh won't you say what uh what, what, what what's going on in your house this weekend yeah so uh diamond club fuckos Join us for the Diamond Club movie party this Saturday, the 20th of January at 10 p.m. Central. Head over to twitter.com slash DC movie party. That's at DC movie party on Twitter for all of the information. Uh, check it out, man. It is a fun time. It is so great. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, Poodle Puncher and Sassian are the ones that run that. Um, it caught a yeah, little love on them. DTNS today, too. Yeah. Yeah, follow them on Twitter at DC Movie Party on Twitter and uh, get all the deets. Um, Fitz, what you got going on this weekend? You gonna be at the movie party? You working? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be at the movie party and we'll do we doing game night tomorrow. I think I'm pretty positive. Okay. I have to have Will confirm. Uh, Will's got some announcements. He's he's gonna announce. I don't want to spoil them. It's pretty cool the stuff we have in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Uh. And awesome. I'll be streaming. I stream every day, five to nine, just about, except for yesterday, because we don't get snow in Georgia. So when we got snow in Georgia, nobody knew how to do anything. So. <laughs> we don't know how to snow. What is that shit on the ground? Yeah. I don't know what to do. Damn it, Jimmy! I told you to use the head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and people can find you at uh, at FitzShiv29. Yeah, on everything: Twitter, Twitch. Uh, that's what you should have done, Kent. You should have just put Del Noche with a string of random numbers behind it. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you could have been like Del Noche O U eight one two. Yeah, man, that would have been that would have been great. Unfortunately, I am at rm underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm Del Noche seventy seven on Twitch. I am Del Noche on Untapped. Uh, just search <laughs> Del Noche, and you'll probably find me on just about any platform. It might have a, a seventy seven at the end of it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, just try to find me. Amos, are, is your situation any better than mine? Uh, yeah, actually, it's a little bit better because I've got one identity online, one in real life, and one on my ID card. So I actually, uh, at least I've got some delineation, right? You know, they're all uh, separated. So you can find me at Ethan Kane. You can find me uh, streaming on Twitch when I play games over on this channel right here, uh, twitch.tv slash virtual misery. And... Um, uh, that's about it, man. Just those two places, because Facebook can can suck a nut. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Facebook, yeah. God, every time I use Facebook, I hate it a little bit more. Um, and I never really liked it to begin with. Anyway, uh, you can find this pod this podcast on Facebook at uh, <laughs> Facebook dot com <laughs> slash Ritual Misery. <laughs> you won't oh, find nothing there, but it's there if you'd like to go hit it with the like button. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. So, um, hey, oh, uh, real quick, uh, the swag, richmondsreadcom slash swag. There is some swag there, and there's going to be more swag as uh, time permits for me to redesign and get it back up there via the spread shirt. And, of course, again, everything on there has a $1 markup, so you, you, f- you can feel good about supporting the show and wearing some sweet swag at the same time. And um, I'd like to give a special thanks to Fitz for uh, for popping in. I have an hour late. <clears throat> and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> really appreciate that. It was fun having you back on. Um, Thanks, Just great. You know what we what else we have, man? We have a subreddit. Hey, um, that's the rumor. I've heard about. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's it's a uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com, and you can go over there. And every time uh, every time we post a show, it pops up over there. So you can go over there and leave some comments or uh, downvote it. Um, or suggestions. We like suggestions. You, you could leave suggestions on there. That'd be cool too. I mean, you know, uh, or some deets on some possible guests. That'd be amazing as well. Yeah, that'd be that'd all be great. Uh, but if that's too much for you, if you oh. can't if you can't do the Reddit, you could always just shoot a shoot an email at podcast at ritualmisery dot com. It doesn't get any easier than that. Podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, let us know some of your thoughts on uh, on on bad Facebook stuff and. Uh, all that good stuff, yeah. I was, I had something else witty to say, but it beard out. Uh, that's how that goes, and that's that's what's gonna happen right there. Um, you can find all this in more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. And of course, I'd like to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. Thank you for listening and or watching. For Kent, for me, and for you, and for Fitz, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. Thanks. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you enjoyed this program. <laughs> God, you both suck. Ha, 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 ha.